G'day mate and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. Um, in the last episode, we really covered how to not only store our oil, superheat our oil before processing the oil and, and destroying the actual oil, but at the same time we also um, covered how to um, get the oil refinery up and running, take the excess natural gas that this outputs when it's processing and shove it into a gas reservoir for for later as you can see we've only got a tiny bit of natural gas in there and i do admit i actually i made a mistake and it's something that I, I i saw i noticed between episodes i fixed oxygen is obviously going to sit at the top of the room and natural gas is going to sit at the bottom of the room i put this sensor up here which as you can see keeps flashing between oxygen and natural gas i moved it down a tile it should be fine at this tile. The bottom half of the room, because the door's up high, should be filled with natural gas. The top half with oxygen. Realistically, I should probably move it down another tile um, and have it sit at the base of the room and detect the pressure of the natural gas. So we pump the natural gas into um, the reservoir because natural gas will naturally sit in the bottom of the room. Um, oh, look, let's just do it now. Uh, copy settings there, there deconstruct that and fix okay so we did that um, we're taking any excess any any gases that aren't natural gas and we're just pumping them out of the room we just don't want to deal with them um, meep finally got around to making a bed for meep and somebody came and made a bed for somebody who's not meep um, we're going to find out who that is at the moment we have another barracks set up um, we can't go up to a bedroom yet because that requires comfy beds which don't even think we have researched. Uh, no, we don't. Um, but we do have room for another duplicate, so we're going to choose a duplicate. And really, we need somebody who can who can build things. Um, that seems to be one of the things we're, we're really really lacking on. Um, or actually, let's look at vitals. And one of the reasons I name them the way I do is we can see what their stats are. So we've got a ranch, we've got a farmer, we've got strong people, we've got kindness, we've got digging. We don't have a dedicated tinkerer. Uh, we don't have a dedicated tinkerer. Um, we don't have a dedicated constructor. So they're really the two things we're looking for. Um, someone who's dedicated to Digging and and um, digging and building, and the best we've got is a plus one to construction, and that's really it. But unfortunately, they're a mouth breeder, so they take twice the amount of oxygen as a normal normal duplicate. Which also means if they're put in an Atmos suit, they burn through the oxygen in an Atmos suit twice as fast. So we're going to avoid them. Um, Devon over here, we could take. There's nothing really wrong with him. Um, oh, sure, let's take him. And we're going to put in uh, plus three strength. Uh, yeah, we're going to take on a, a Devon. Now, he is in a night hour position. So we're going to print him off. I'm going to pause the game before we go any further. And we're going to set up a new schedule. Night owl. And this is the time when they're meant to be sleeping. So straight away, that's going to be a work schedule. Um, we want our downtime to overlap with everybody else. That's still really, really important. Um, we want to give them a different bath time to everybody else. And we have to give them some sort of bedtime routine. So I think we're just going to give them right here in the middle of the day. Um, because they are a night owl, um, that's probably the best one for them. And your strength plus three with that picture. So you're going to get moved to there. At the same time, we're going to move Meep across the night owl schedule as well. Because four dupes four bathrooms seems to be the magic number um we can have some overlap but they do choose to go use the bathroom sometimes when it's not allocated uh, bath time um so 
Yeah. Um, sometimes their needs out out outrank the the, the schedule. Uh, same time, we want to go over to the jobs board, and we want to give you. Let's have that mode. It was off. Uh, we're gonna set you up as a gopher because you want to do supply. Um, same time, do we have anybody else who's mastered anything? No. Okay, our stress is still really, really low. In fact, the only person stressed is uh, Devon, being strength three, who just showed up. Actually, we've already got a strength three, don't we? Plus three to strength, strength plus three. I got the name around the wrong way. Uh, strength plus three. Put supply in brackets, done. Uh, and yet yeah, the name didn't take. It will take eventually. Okay, so your stress is currently going up because you got low morale because you already need a, uh, an assignment of two and you've only got one. He will correct himself eventually. At the same time, also set up more refrigerators because our previous ones were full. Which means I want to I want to kill off our farm. Okay, um, and. The optimal way to do this is spend some time looking at your farm. When they come along and harvest these four, dig them up straight away. That is the ideal way to decommission your farm slowly over time because each one of these has required um, 10 dirt per cycle. So over 20, uh, 12 cycles, that's 120 kilos worth of dirt. It is a, a semi-finite resource. So I do really recommend that you decommission these the proper way. Um, in our case, we're just going to... Sure, let's just do it that way. Um, and I'll even set a high priority to just get rid of them. Um, we just want them gone. So for this episode, I want to set up plastic. Okay, that's the next really, really big thing. We are slowly, ever so slowly, getting oil. Um, it's not in vast amounts because it turns out this thing puts out very, very small amounts of oil continuously. Continuous is the bonus. Um, oh, and we also had somebody who took damage last episode. I don't remember who it was. Vitals. Health. It was our strength plus five. So I want to set you... And you would really assume that we'd list the med beds would be sorted according to health. Turns out they're not. They're sorted according to absolutely nothing helpful. Uh, strength plus five at Tinkerer. We're going to assign them to a med bed. Um, I strongly recommend your med beds are probably five. Um, just so if a duplicate does end up in trouble, uh, hopefully going to the med bed is a higher priority than anything else. You, Wrangle, probably not. Get out of here. Um, you need to go over the Great Hatchery and be potentially killed off and turned into barbecue. So, st Strength 5 is going to come along. They have Light Wounds. Light Wounds give them a minus 3 to Athletics. More importantly, as soon as they get into a med bed, their hit points go up by 50 per cycle. They've only got 100, so in two cycles they can go from almost dead to completely healthy again doesn't take them long if somebody comes along and applies kindness to them which maybe there we go so kindness four is doing using the med bed uh, strength five is also using the med bed don't ask Uh, where are we? Med bed rest. Uh, there we go, health. That's the one I'm looking for. So when this bar finishes, they'll actually get a bonus. Uh, up to 75 per cycle. So that's a, a nice healthy increase. Yeah, you, you've been captured. You can go off and be fed to the hatchery. Um, so that's a nice bonus. They should heal up very, very, very quickly. Um, they've received care. They're appreciated. Um, someone saw how hard this dude was working and gave them a compliment. 
feels great. Stress change minus 5%. Well, there you go. Um, okay, so over here to do plastic. So first things first is we're going to be digging through the abyssalite. Um, which does mean heat and, and gases can now move between the two biomes. So, because I want to attempt to keep... Do I want to attempt to keep... No, we're not going to bother. We're going to let the cool flow out and the oxygen flow in because we just have so much oxygen. I'm also going to make that a little bit larger. So we're going to let a little bit more gas flowing through this area just because, as I said, we have just so much oxygen. Um, oh, and also when this is done, airflow tiles, out of gold, want airflow there, I want airflow there, I want deconstruct, uh, actually, let's just do one at a time because tubes have a habit of getting themselves stuck. Our storage also happens to be full. Uh, down two tiles. That's the new ground. Dig that out. Uh, build a ladder down. We can get in that way. You can be deconstructed. You can be tiled. Yep, something's gonna get stuck. I can see it. I can see it already. Uh, furniture, crown molding, all the way along the top. Oxygen, a deodorizer at the front. Done. We're good. We can walk away and leave that alone and it'll just get done over time. And what's that? Digging plus six, who now has a digging of 12, will um, probably get stuck. No? Okay. Alright, once that's done, we can copy our storage settings across. Um, in the meantime, back to our plastic situation. So, every single time you open up new areas, this is an important one and I haven't covered it in a while, uh, mainly because we haven't opened up any new areas, although we did miss that guy, um, is to make sure that you auto-harvest things. So, like, that pinch of pepper was also missed as well. But it's always good, high priority, priority eight or something. So as soon as you get access, the Jeep runs over here and does it. Um, just literally run around the map and just have them harvest everything. Everything that they can possibly ever get access to, have it harvested. Um, you never know when, it, when it's gonna come in handy. Um, and as long as you've got food storage that doesn't decay, then it might as well go into the food storage. So right at the moment, we've just got access to all these sleep wheats. Um, none of them have finished growing. But there is already sleep wheat a grain on the ground, which can go into storage. Which also means in our electric drill, uh, grill, uh, we're also going to have access now to frost buns, which are a pretty high quality food. Uh, but at the same time, we could also get access to pepper bread, which is sleep wheat grain and pincher pepper. Pincher pepper is the one thing that we don't have yet. Um, you can look at your food here, uh, that cook ingredients, and, and look at these numbers and sort of take your cue from these numbers as to what you actually want them to cook and when you want to cook it. If I have way too much sleep wheat grain that's actually clogging up my fridges, I will come over here and I will start making heaps and heaps of frost buns with a quality standard of two. I'd much prefer the pep uh, pepper bread with a quality of five. But if I can't, if I can't afford to make it, then I won't. Um, I guess that sort of sums things up. Okay, so we need to get our dupes access down into our anti thingy majiggy bolt. Um, uh, also, sleep wheat. Actually, that's an important thing. So, sleep wheat naturally growing grows once every seventy-two cycles. You do get eighteen grain from per, um, like, like wheat or corn. Um, you do get a lot of food per cycle, uh, per, per, per life cycle of, of the actual food. Um, when you domesticate it, it does bring it all the way down to 18 cycles. It needs dirt at five kilos 
per, per cycle, along with all these other conditions have to be met. It also needs 20 kilos of water per cycle. Which, getting water, or more importantly, the plant itself down to a, a temperature of minus 55 to 5 degrees, with getting water cool enough to feed into the system can be very awkward. So I normally recommend, wherever possible, leave this naturally growing. Don't open it up. Don't touch it. Um, pick up a duplicate. You'll do. Uh, click the show navigation. Say, so, okay, we can't go past there. So let's put in a ladder. Uh, find another duplicate. You, you, you'll do. Show navigation. We can now get up to here. If I dig that out. We can now make it all the way over to here. So on and so forth. Um, dig a path for, for your duplicates. Make sure they can access as much the biome as possible to access as much this sleep weight. Like This is harvested. This is ready to be harvested right now. But obviously they have no access. Right. So I'm going to dig those out. You've already asked to submit a bio scan. Probably nine. I know this is exactly that big in size. And we can access to this. Now, the anti... The anti-entropy thermo nullifier is a self-sustaining machine powered by what appears to be refined neutronium. It absorbs and neutralizes heat energy when submerged in hydrogen. So it actually takes a, a gas intake for hydrogen. And if you remember, we have a tiny bit of excess hydrogen being output here. The good news is it only needs 10 grams per second of hydrogen. So it really doesn't need that much. Uh, yeah, that temperature's come down to warm. Warm is the polite way of putting it. Um, but yeah, we, we need more hydrogen, which is why I've started taking on duplicates to breathe more oxygen to hopefully... And they refuse to do this stuff. We're just going to have to up priority on things so they do it. Um, they did access a new biome, so it's probably got something to do with it. Uh, so you can't get to these two if I dig that out. You can now access into there. We can access into there because we've submitted our bioscan. So yeah, we now have one of these lovely machines that will cool down the area. Now, we also want to get a polymer press, which is utilities. No, refinement. Refinement. Polymer press. So polymer press takes in 833 grams per second of petroleum. Needs 240 watts worth of wire. Has liquid intake pipe and gas output pipe. So it makes 500 grams per second of plastic. It makes 8 grams of steam, which is just vented off into the local area. It also makes 8 uh, grams per second of carbon dioxide, which actually flows out that gas output pipe. And 32,500 uh, duplicate thermal units worth of heat. So it's a very, very, very hot machine. Um, hence why I'm looking at putting it inside a, a coal biome. Um, so quick and easy, we're going to go... So I'm going to dig those two tiles out. Buy stone. Um, I want... No, a duplicate's going to have to come up this way to access stuff. So we're going to dig that out, dig that out. That'll let them path to there. We're going to dig that out and replace all of that with a ladder. So they can access to there now. Uh, we're going to dig that out so they can get all the way over here. We're going to dig that out so they can get up to there. We're going to... Dig that out and that out so I can get across to there. Um, we'll dig that out so I can get to that one. And grab a duplicate to confirm. Show navigation. Yeah, they can get just about everywhere. Okay, so our plastic generation. Um, we're going to try and stay close to this. At the same time, we do want to give ourselves just a little bit of distance um, between the thermonullifier and ourselves. We also need to watch out for ice 
um, because we will start melting this ice and polluted ice is obviously going to drip into polluted water as long as it stays colder than minus 20 degrees we should be fine should be um, So first things first, some tiles, uh, do I want that one, I don't think so, uh, actually let's, let's do this a little bit differently, let's go right, let's go right there, let's dig that out instead, we'll put a hole in there, well, they're going to go to our refinement. We're going to polymer press. Um, I normally like building these on an edge. And I like having the, the plastic, which... Let's put one down. Uh, three tiles... Three tiles wide, I said. Uh, refinement. Polymer press. So, I like... Putting these on just a little ledge and the plastic actually comes out the front of the machine and lands right here halfway between these two tiles. If, if it's built in that orientation, it pushes the plastic a little bit further, it actually falls right over the edge and it will fall all the way down to the ground. So, um, I'm actually gonna take advantage of that. Uh, wrong button, deconstruct. And we're going to build it on mesh tiles, are we? Uh, no, we're going to build it on airflow tiles, are we? No, we're going to build it on tile tiles. Okay, so we're going to build it on tiles to get it up off the ground a little bit. We're then going to put our polymer press in. We're going to have it facing that way. So it outputs the plastic this way. Uh, it has a output for carbon dioxide for the moment oh that's the other thing it's actually three tall tiles tall even though it doesn't look it um, we're just going to output that straight there we're going to take our insulated gas pipe uh, gas pipe insulated liquid pipe come out from the the small amount of petroleum we have we don't have a lot and our power is still technically okay really that's sort of shocking. Uh, okay, power. Let's, 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 let's. Let's change that. That. We'll have the troops just start upgrading the power lines. Deconstruct. Okay. It looks like none of that took. Nope. Okay, something for me to do between episodes. Um, we're gonna take our plumbing. We're gonna take our inside of pipe. We're gonna run it out here. And really, really messy. It, it really doesn't matter too much at this stage because a lot of this will end up getting finalized, I guess is probably the best way of putting it. After you access like more of this biome, at the moment I, I've, I've dug a really narrow bit out. Um, if you find, when you find another cold biome and you access it for sleep wheat, whichever one has this thermo nullifier is normally the one you end up sort of sacrificing for lack of a better term. And sort of turning into 
that is the spot where I'm going to make um, my plastic. And we're just going to, unfortunately, ruin the rest of the biome. So we won't worry about the sleep weed anymore. Um, we're just going to sort of, as it just kill off the biome. Those two, those two, those two, those two, those two. Uh, how the hell do we get to there? We go ladder, 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 ladder. Okay, they should be able to path anywhere in here now. I've got another vending machine up there. There's more sleep weed up here. Um, unfortunately, this looks like a really, really nice biome and I'd really like to use it, but we need plastic. We need plastic to progress. So I might as well start with conductive wire. We're going to run this across, up, and I'm just going to hook that in there. And you'll see straight away we've started making plastic. Now, this runs potentially infinitely. It, 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 as long as you provide petroleum in, the polymer press will just keep making plastic forever. Um, in doing so, it, it does a couple of things. One, it's going to heat up the bio. Um, oh, I made a mistake already. Okay. Uh, that's petroleum. Damn, I don't have any quick way of getting that back into the system. Um, refinement. Polymer press. Out of gold, because that overheat temperature is really important. Thanks for all the pop-ups game. Okay, attempt number two. So, as we can see... Alright, first off, we're bringing in petroleum at a nice balmy 67 degrees. Even though we're running in an insulated pipe, it is cooling down a little bit. There is some thermal transfer, um, which also means at the same time, there is some heating of this biome going on. And you can see our polymer press is already up to the grand total of 34 degrees. It's going down slowly because um, it is a fresh building. It, it's gone in a, the default temperature, for lack of a better term, because I'm using the sandbox mode. By the same token, the more plastic it produces, the more it will heat back up. Um, we'll see when this plastic teleports out and gets dropped out, rather. I'm just teleporting the junk out of the way. So when this pops out, you can see that it's at 65 degrees. Along with the steam that popped out, instantly got turned into water vapor and is slowly cooling the ground, etc. Um, there are options. Um, you can see it is sitting in a tiny little bit of um, water right here, um, which will help to cool down the machine. You can do lots of other things like the temp shift plates. Um, what we're actually probably going to do in the next episode is we're going to try to take some of the heat generated from this machine and run it through the anti-entropy th thermonullifier, the, th the thermonullifier, and try and use the cool generated from this machine uh, to cool off this machine. Um, they put out, I think this, the thermonullifier puts out enough cooling to effectively cool two polymer presses running flat out. Um, but again, we'll, we'll have to see what happens in the next episode. Um, but that is the plan. So, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you're enjoying. Um, I, I'm really glad we've got access to Sleet Wheat now. We actually have absolute heaps of it. So, we're going to start mass producing frost buns. And I will see you guys in the next episode. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.